Welcome to Pick Up and Deliver, the podcast where I pick up my audio recorder as I step off the train and deliver an episode to you while I walk home. I'm Brendan Riley. Well, hello, listeners. It's a lovely day here in suburban Chicago. It's pretty warm. It's the beginning of September, and I think I've inadvertently take a like a two-week hiatus from the podcast. I was clipping along at a good rate recording episodes and then I had a journey to take my daughter to college and I did not release one episode in there. So sorry if you've been missing it. I'm back. We're definitely off pace to finish by December but we'll see what we see. So today is uh, I'm recording this on Wednesday September 4th. But it's the first episode I've recorded after the beginning of September, so it's time for a Top of the Stack episode. And I know that that's really close to the last one, but it is what it is. It's the one one regular thing you can expect when you get an episode of Pick Up and Deliver. So, for those of you somehow new to the podcast, uh, Top of the Stack episode is where I talk about the games I played in the last month and the games I'm planning to play in the next month. The notion of the Top of the Stack is the idea that I have a sort of big stack of games I want to play and I intentionally put a couple games on top of that stack to try out. So there we are, let's just jump right in. So start with our final monthly stats for August of 2024. I had 66 plays of 46 different games, bringing my year total to 606 plays of 225 different games. It's been a good year so far, uh, playing lots of different games, having a grand old time. My shelf of opportunity has been growing rather than shrinking. It went from 66 to 70 games in August. Uh, That's actually, I feel pretty good about that actually since Gen Con was in August and I did pick up a few games there. I also had a couple games given to me and found a couple games at Goodwill. So having a robust influx of games and I still managed to play enough of them that I only added four to the collection or I only added four to the unplayed list. My collection size, however, expanded by nine. So I went from 596 games to 605 games. I've now crested 600, folks. This is truly perilous. We'll see if I can do some good work here this fall to get that number down below 600, but I doubt it. My most played game on the table was Palaces of Carrara. Uh, that might be a that might be a July stat. Hold on a second. Did I just give you a July stat? I might have. How can you stand for me giving you stats that aren't correct? Uh, My most played game on the table was Dorf Romantic, the board game with five plays. That was pretty great. And my most played game uh, online is a tie between PAX Renaissance 2nd Edition and PAX Premier 2nd Edition, both at four plays. So I'm getting a lot of plays of those games in. But Dorf Romantic was the winner for most plays on the table. I had four games that I put on top of the stack. As a reminder, I always pick out four that count as the top of the stack. If I play three of them in a month, it counts as a successful month. So of the four that I picked, Aquatica got played, Deadly Dirigibles got played, Leaf got played, and Switch and Signal did not get played. So three of the four got played, successful month. It's been, uh, those have been few and far between this year. My total for the year is 17 out of 24 possible games. If I'd had all successful games so far, it would have been 24 out of 24. And if I'd played all four games, it would be 32 out of 24. Well, it was a great month for playing new games. I played 13 new games this month. Coming into the month, I had 52 new games played this year. Coming out, I had 65. So really robust month for that. The list of new games I played, Burn the Fort, The Art Project, A-R-T, Aqua, Biodiversity in the Oceans, Ziggurat, Keyflower, and that's how I died. Perspectives, Master Dater, A Fake Artist Goes to New York, Deadly Dirigibles, Dorf Romantic, Ingenious Challenges, and Ingenious. Altogether, 65 new games played. I also tried out three expansions this month. I played Exit the Game Prison Break, another of the Exit games. I played Moniker's Classics, which is a, an, another Moniker's game and I played Orléans Invasion. This one was really great. Uh, Orléans Invasion is the co-op module uh, of the Orléans expansions. And basically as players, you are trying to accomplish a bunch of different things before the 
invading forces of the Mongols or the Picts or whoever, I think it's the Picts, show up. And if you do that together, you win. Uh, I played with my buddy Paul and we managed to succeed in the second to last turn that we possibly could. So that was pretty cool. Actually, I think we succeeded on the last turn, but it wasn't until the second to last turn that we were sure we were going to be able to. So that was pretty fun. Uh, that was Orleans Invasion, which brings me to 15 new expansions tried this year. Uh, next up we have Out of the Dust Plays. Out of the Dust is a categorization of a game where you have played this game before, but you haven't played it for more than a year, hence it's gotten sort of metaphorically dusty. Or if it's in your own collection, literally dusty. So the idea is, uh, if you play a game that you haven't played in more than a year, you dust it off and it goes on the Out of the Dust list. Uh, there is a Board Game Geek list that people post to of their own Out of the Dust plays each month, it's maintained by Anne Journey, and it's pretty great. So you should check that out if that's something you keep track of. So before this month, I had played 36. I had brought 36 games out of the dust, or an average of three a month. I, well, no, uh, it's month eight, month seven. So 30, 36 divided by seven, it's like five to six. Yeah, it's like five. So on average, I'm bringing out five a month. I did better than that this month. I brought out, uh, well, I guess five. <laughs> uh, I brought out Power Grid, Scotland Yard, Rear Window, Scythe, which I played on Board Game Arena, and Carpe Diem, which I played on uh, Yukata. Scythe, oh, Power Grid is the biggest gap of five years, one month, 27 days. And after that, Scythe with four years, three months, 14 days. So lots of different, um, lots of distance in some of those plays. It was great. I did have notable plays noted this month. Dorf Romantic was a really fun uh, co-op game that we played with my in-laws. And I think we're going to kind of save it to play with the in-laws. It's going to be something we'll generally play just with them. And then A Fake Artist Goes to New York is a game I've heard about a lot, but I've never actually played, so it was fun to get that to the table. My 10 for 10 progress, I did move a couple more categories toward 10. Uh, Escape Room Games by playing Exit the Game The Prison Break. We're now at 10 in that category. Uh, and playing Ziggurat puts us up to four stars in the alphabet U to Z and four numbers category. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories that are now at 10 stars. So we're well past 70. Just have to get the last three up to 10 and we succeed in the 10 by 10. I did not do any painting this month. Boop. I've already mentioned these games, but the games that I removed from my shelf of opportunity list were Ingenious Challenges and Dastardly Dirigibles. Then these other games are games that I bought and played this month. Burn the Fort, Aquatica, Leaf, and That's How I Died, and Dorf Romantic. Although, and That's How I Died was a game that was given to us uh, as a gift. While I did buy a few games at Gen Con, namely uh, Burn the Fort and Aquatica, and Freedom the Underground Railroad, and Leaf, I brought those four at Gen Con, I also picked up a number of expansions. I got the Orleans the Plague expansion, the Freedom the Underground Railroad event card expansion, Revive Call of the Abyss, the Ark Nova Zoo Map Pack 1, and two A Touch of Evil card packs, one Last on Earth card pack, uh, the Orleans Fifth Player expansion, and the Orleans Trade and Intrigue expansion. I ended up buying those used from somebody who had them, but they were mixed into the base game of Orleans as well. But the base game of Orleans is something we don't have at the Toggle Game Club, and we really should. So we decided to get that game for Toggle, and then I uh, got those expansions paid for myself. As I said, the collection size is ballooned to 605. I acquired Burn the Fort, Aquatica, Freedom the Underground Railroad, and Leaf at Gen Con. I got Forest Shuffle, and that's how I died in Dorf Romantic just in purchases. Forest Shuffle was a uh, purchase that I got because of points. Dwarf Romantic was a gift, so it was, and that's how I died. Finally, I, I found Azul Stained Glass of Sintra and Hamilton Dual Ordeal at Goodwill. And on our trip to drop my daughter off, we did stop in at one game store where we picked up Antiquity Quest and El Grande. Finally, I had, I got a chance to play Ingenious Challenges, and it was fine, but not great, not something I'm like super excited about. So we decided to donate it 
since Toggle has a copy of Ingenious, and Ingenious Challenges is like a play on the Ingenious system. It comes with a, a dice rolling version of the game and a card version of the game, but it also comes with an alternate rule set to play with the tiles, but you can only do that if you actually have the Ingenious base game as well. So I donated the Ingenious Challenges game to Toggle, and I put it inside the box for Ingenious. So now it's a secondary set of things that people could do with Ingenious. And that reduced my collection from 606 to 605, which is where we are now. Uh, overall, like I said, it was a good month for game playing. Uh, it was really neat to get to try those games. It was neat to knock two games out of my shelf of opportunity and have five games that were going to come in, but then didn't. That means the games that were added this month were Freedom, Duel Ordeal, Azul Stained Glass of Sintra, Antiquity Quest, and El Grande. I'm most interested about Azul Stained Glass of Sintra because if you go back several years to the time that I played that, I didn't like it that much. I thought it was okay, but I didn't like it that much. I'm interested to try it again now that I've, I'm a little older and I've played more Azul games. But that's an interesting element of like just being a collector. While it isn't something that I want to play every day or even all that often, because I have regular Azul and I have Azul, I have the Crystal Mosaic expansion for Azul and I have Azul Summer Pavilion, having Azul Stained Glass of Sintra when I can get it for cheap feels like a nice collection moment, even if it's not a game I'm going to play very often. Uh, it does sort of beg the question though of whether I'm going to get Azul Queen's, Queen's Garden which is the heaviest of the Azuls, and from the stuff I've read, feels a lot like Calico, in which case, why, why not just keep Calico, which I have and enjoy. And then I'm really excited to try the two games that I picked up on our trip to visit my daughter, which leads me to the final thing we always do in the Top of the Stack episode, which is nominate the next Top of the Stack. So for September, I have picked out four games that I want to put on Top of the Stack. The first is Switch and Signal. This is a cooperative game. That I've been trying to get played for a while. It's got a boring theme, train management, uh, but it's supposed to be pretty good and I would like to give it a try. We'll see. Maybe I'll bust out the solo mode to get that played. Then we have the two games that we bought on our trip. El Grande, which I regularly hear is like one of the best games ever made. It's definitely up in the top ranks of the Board Game Geek list and the new printing is very pretty, so I was excited to get it. It's also got, uh, it's a Hans and Gluck game, I believe, and they've got a new environmentally friendly packaging system that's also part of Dorf Romantic that I really like. So the cards are wrapped in like wax paper rather than plastic. And the game comes with a bunch of small boxes that are flat, cardboard boxes, thin cardboard boxes that are flat. And then you sort of expand them up and put them together. And then that's where you put the components. So instead of giving you plastic bags, they give you little cardboard boxes. The game Leaf also came produced that way. So I'm liking this shift away from plastic, uh, even if the boxes are, feel a little weird, but I bet soon they'll be commonplace enough. So that's El Grande, a uh, classic area control game. And then uh, Antiquity Quest is a small box uh, set collection game from Uncle Beck's Games, or Grandpa Beck's Games. And that game looks really interesting. That company is really interesting. This is the first game of theirs that I have, but it came with a little insert explaining that Grandpa Beck's games is like a family activity. Grandpa Beck is the sort of lead designer of the group, but a bunch of members of the family participate. And here's the thing I really like. Uh, it comes with a helpline information, which is Grandpa Beck's email address and Grandpa Beck's phone number. And so if you want help with the game, you can just call, email, call, or text you email the email address, call the number, or text it, and you can just talk to Grandpa Beck and he'll tell you how to play the game, which I think is really cute. There's also a picture of Grandpa and Grandma Beck and their grandchildren in the, in the game. So, looking forward to Antiquity Quest. It looks like a pretty simple, rummy-inspired set collection game, but I think it looks fun. Probably going to be pretty accessible for when we're playing games with people who don't play a lot of games. So that is Antiquity Quest, and then... For my shelf clear game of the month, I picked five points, The Gangs of New York, which that one's going to take a little effort to play, but I think it'd be fun. And I should watch Gangs of New York first so I can, I don't know, pretend to be Daniel Day-Lewis, I guess. Well, that's about it for me today. Thanks for joining me on my walk. What games did you play in August? Head over to Board Game Geek Guild 3269 and share your plays and share your plans for September. I'd love to hear them. Until next time, I'm Brendan, and I hope your next walk is as pleasant as mine was. 
Bye bye. Brought to you by Rattlebox Games.